Yes. Uh, my name is Chris Connor. Chris Connor with Franchise Marketing Systems, and uh, today's workshop is going to be about starting a business versus opening up a franchise. Uh, kind of both one and the same, but two different channels of entrepreneurship. Um, I've been in the franchise uh, world doing franchise development, helping companies franchise, helping people open franchises for 19 years. I'm originally from Chicago, uh, currently live here in the Atlanta area, Gainesville. We've got an office in the Gulf of Our main business is in helping companies franchise, but in doing that, we spend a lot of time with people helping them figure out what franchise to invest in, whether franchising is a good idea, uh, whether it makes sense for them, and, and that's really the premise of this whole discussion. Um, so we'll talk about both. And, and the first thing I'll say is that, believe it or not, we're at a franchise show, you're talking to a franchise guy, franchising is not for everyone. And, and that's one of the first things that I recommend people get a look at in trying to decide which route to go, is try to figure out which route your personality fits, which route maybe fits what your goals and your aspirations are, and, and then it can really help clear the path for finding the right business and the right opportunity and, and whichever might end up being the best investment. Um, so one thing I wanted to do before I started here, because I've got some great brands that I've helped develop that are here local as well, uh, so I wanted to give a shout out to a couple of these brands. We have Patrice McKinney. Patrice, can you stand up? Uh, Patrice is local here in Atlanta. She's a brand called Encore Salon Suites. Awesome brand. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a model where you rent space to beauty professionals in a boutique, compact uh, uh, space. Unbelievably great margins. Unbelievably great person. And so much of what I recommend with anyone who's trying to figure out who you work with, look at the people who are behind it. Figure out who you're working with, make sure that their core values, what, what they stand for, what makes them tick, lines up with yours. Totally recommend. Talk to Patrice. If you want to, after this whole thing, you can grab her and pull her aside. In the back, I'd also like to introduce you to Cassie. Cassie is the founder of Pink Caviar, a waxing and beauty franchise, also here in the Atlanta area. Phenomenal model, great margins. Cassie is an incredible marketer as well. Uh, really has figured out how to capitalize on this model and drive traffic into locations. Again, totally recommend. If it's the beauty space, talk to Cassie. And then right over here, with these two gentlemen, we have two of them, Patrick Franco's, uh, junior and senior. Uh, they came in from Texas. Uh, these gentlemen have a sterilization service franchise, which Obviously, big thing right now, uh, just with what's going on. Uh, unbelievable value proposition, and uh, uh, business has been booming. If you want to talk about that industry segment, grab them on the side of this too. So, uh, to get started here, the uh, an overview. Look, look. <laughs> All right, let's try to do it this way. Perfect. Um, so, the first thing that we'll cover is defining who you are. And that's one of the first things I recommend doing when you're trying to figure out which route to go and which business to invest in. Think, doing a personal self-evaluation is the first step. We'll talk about what, what tools we, we would recommend using for that, how to do that. This microphone thing is not working out that well. All right, perfect. Um, so first, how we go through that. Then we'll talk about what our goals are. Then we'll look at, at the small business startup. Being a pure entrepreneur, starting up our own business without the support of a franchise, and then we'll compare that to opening it up as a franchise owner. Uh, and the pros, uh, positives, negatives of both. So, high level, at, 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 a, at a summary level, a franchise, the value of a franchise model is that you should be getting a process, a proven process for how you run the business and how you manage it. Someone who has already figured out how to do this and already been through it, you should be able to leverage their expertise, leverage their time in the industry, and they should be able to support you in, in being more successful in a shorter time period. Um, they should have a team in place, and, and they should have someone who's going to coach you and mentor you. Ultimately, what we're looking for in a franchise is, I want a shorter path to 
profitability than what I could get on my own. That's how I justify making this investment into a franchise model. On the flip side, when we start our own business, we have complete control. We have every ability to make every decision we've ever wanted to. We have a completely clean slate on deciding what brand we use, how we market, how we operate, what industry we're in, what vendors we go to. There's also a little bit of, of personal recognition that we get maybe more so when we start our own business. What, one question I, I always love to ask is how many of us can name individuals that own McDonald's franchises? And I, I've been in franchising for 20 years and I don't think I know one person's name who owns one. When you go into franchising, it's more about the brand, it's more about becoming a part of the system and the network, it's not so much about us as individuals. And the last part is freedom. If we start our own business, we have complete freedom to really do whatever route we choose to go into. So, the next thing I'd recommend that we look at, we're going through this self-evaluation. What do we want to get out of a business? What's important to us? And one of the things when I first talk to people about what, what franchise they might be interested in, someone will come to me, Chris, what's the best franchise out there to invest in? I want to make the most money I could possibly make doing a business. And, and some of the businesses that I've worked with, they make a lot of money, but they're really not that appealing from a lifestyle standpoint. Like we have one that uh, does restoration, uh, where if, if you have like a sewage backup, you're in the basement, you know, in a ha hazmat suit, you're, you know, you're billing the insurance company, there's one that does crime scene cleanup, which is even, you know, tougher. And, and, and I think it's, it's important to figure out what is driving us, what is important to us in a business, and make sure that we find something that fits. Because if money is the only factor, we're probably not going to end up happy in, in, the, in the long run if we choose a business that doesn't line up with what our interests are. It doesn't line up with what our skill sets are. So I would break down different categories of, of industry. The first is you can start a business as a hobby. It's fun. You're passionate about it. It may not make a ton of money, but you enjoy doing it. That's okay. The second category I'd look at would be as an investment. Now, I have started myself, I've owned seven different franchises over 20 years that I've invested in. All but two of them have failed miserably. I've lost way more money than I care to even think about right now. And a lot of it was because I, I chose brands that I didn't have the ability and I wasn't in the position to manage as an absentee owner. And there's two ways to go into business. One is an owner-operator where you're in it running it, you're managing it, you're executing that business every day. We were talking about this earlier. And the other way is, I put my money into it and I let someone else run it. I hire someone to run it. The problem is, that business's most aggressive, passionate, critical person is not involved day to day in that business. So odds are you're not going to get the same focus, you're not going to get the same drive. And I know my new business franchise marketing systems has worked largely because I work 100 hours a week. I, I have for 10 years now and I've put in that grind and I've pushed it and I've, put, and I've stayed up late, I've woken up early, all that stuff that you do as an owner operator. So if we're looking at businesses that we're not going to run, I would just say we need to be extra careful. We need to make sure we have enough money. We need to make sure we have the right systems in place. We need to make sure we have the right operator to help us run that business. And, and I would always, always caution someone before they make the move into an investment business as opposed to an operating business, even more. Uh, the third category would be an income-derived business, and this is an owner-operator model. I love owner-operated businesses. The scary thing about owner-operated businesses is you cannot keep your job and start a business, wait till it's profitable, and then leave your job. You've got to commit. I'll talk about some ways that we can work through that and how you can plan for that. But that, to me, if you haven't been in business before, is the only way you do this. You find a business you're passionate about, you jump into it, you get the pool all the way in. Uh, and then the last part of this would be the change in lifestyle. Uh, what is important to us uh, from a lifestyle standpoint? And um, does the business fit our lifestyle? Does it match up with what we're interested in, what we're good at, what we enjoy? So the first thing I'd recommend doing is look at your own value proposition. Everyone has a skill, a couple of skills, let's say. We all bring something to the market. We 
we have some background, we have some industry experience, and I, I see this happen all the time where someone who has like an awesome resume, let's say as a CPA, and they jump into the restaurant business and they have no experience, they have no credibility in the industry, they have no contacts, and, and a lot of times they, they maybe missed an opportunity to leverage their resume, leverage those, those contacts they have, and get into an industry that they could have had a jump start in. First of all, figure out what we bring to the market. Let's find businesses first that match up with our skill sets, that match up with our contacts, that we can, we can benefit from those first. Next, look at the market opportunity. It, it is a shame when you see a whole lot of people run into an industry segment because they get emotionally connected to it. How many darn frozen yogurt places did we see open up and, and go away in a matter of like four or five years where if people sat down, ran the numbers, did the market research, and figured out only so much frozen yogurt is being bought in, in this town, I'm not gonna put the third one there. It's not a good idea. Figure out how much potential there is in the market. Now I'm looking at competition. If we're getting into an industry that has competition, we need to have a better mousetrap. What do we do that's better than the other players out there? What do we have that's an, an advantage? And, and, I, and I always like to go back to that very simple interaction. A customer has called me, they're asking me, why should I work with you? Why should I come to your restaurant over the other restaurants? If I don't have a good answer for that, probably not the best business to go into. Do that competitive analysis, understand how we stack up. Next, figure out how we're gonna sell it. I don't care if we have the best pizza in the world or the best widget or the best product that you could possibly come up with. If you can't figure out how to sell it, it's not worth anything. Make sure we have a good marketing model, make sure we understand who the customer is and how we're gonna get those people in the door and ultimately to pay for services. Then I'd look at operations. We need to manage the business, we need to execute. Then financials. The, the number one reason that people fail in any business is they go in undercapitalized. They don't have a, enough, enough gas in the tank to actually do the business model. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we, we do this and what I recommend that you do. But um, in business, there are hard costs. Uh, like Patrice, to open up a location of Encore, you have to, you have to construct the building. You have to buy furniture, fixtures, and equipment. You have to buy signage. But the day you open up, you're gonna have to pay rent, you're gonna have to pay insurance, you're gonna have to pay an employee. You need some money in the bank to pay those expenses. And a lot of people go into business looking at the hard costs, and that's the number that they think they need without having any working capital. We, we, I can help you through this here in, in a couple of slides too, but make sure we have the money in the bank, make sure we have a little bit of cushion with whatever industry segment you choose. And, and the last part is we need to make sure we're ready to execute. I mentioned, uh, I'm gonna skip that one, that's a horrendous slide. Um, I mentioned it earlier, finding a business that we are passionate enough about to be an owner-operator in it. And, and I have worked with a lot of people who their plan, their intentions are good, but their plan is to keep a job because they have a, an income and a job and a 401k, start a business on the side, wait for it to get profitable, and then leave the job. And most of the time, it, it, the business never gets profitable because you don't have that focus and that intensity that it needs to turn that corner. If we are starting a business that we have done the planning, we've done the research, we've figured out the financial model, we've made sure that this industry, industry segment works, we'll have the confidence to jump into it and execute and really, and really uh, um, push on it. What, one of the, the items that I love about the franchise space is and, and really entrepreneurship, is there's no limit to the industry segment. When I first got in this business in 2001, um, it was maybe 40, 50% food service. Heavily focused on, on food service, which, no offense to food service. Restaurants can be great, food service can be great. But there's a whole lot of other industry segments, particularly in the service category. I, I tend to like services. I think, I think your margins are high, Speaking about all three of us in the room here, brands that we've worked with, you've got high margins, you've got low cost of goods, there's a lot of benefits to it. But all of these categories, there, there's relevant brands in franchising that we could find. So my point is, don't get pulled into one category because that's all we think the opportunity is. 
again, if we have a background in manufacturing, why not look at those spaces first? If we've got a background in beauty services, why not look at some of the beauty service franchise models first? We can leverage our, our experience and, and uh, time in the industry. So uh, a couple of things that uh, I, I think are important to look at when we're going through figuring out which business to start and how to make this leap in entrepreneurship. Um, there is always going to be some element of risk. That saying of risk, can't, can't sit and find a reward unless you're willing to take some degree of risk. It's okay to have risk. We have to. My thing is, there's a big difference between smart risk and dumb risk. The dumb risk is the risk we don't even know. We jump into a business without even really understanding what the risks were. We don't, we don't fully comprehend whether our business has the ability to overcome those risks but, or if the reward is there to justify it. Smart risk is when we plan, we research, we understand that market, and we execute only once we fully have a comprehension of what it makes sense to do. But one of the people that I worked with early on in this business was a, a guy named Ed Renzi, who was the CEO for McDonald's, um, 1990 to like 2000, for 10 years. Unbelievably impressive guy, like one of those people when you're around him, you just like feel like you're getting smarter. It's like radiating off of him. He has, he has bought 10 different franchises since he, he retired from McDonald's. He would not invest in a franchise without doing due diligence for a minimum of six months, usually a year. That was the time frame. He was going to the parking lots of existing franchisees and watching how many people went into that restaurant. He was sit, spending full days sitting in the dining room. He, he was mainly food service. But he, he was going through an extreme deep dive evaluation before he pulled the trigger on anything. That, that whole saying of uh, Warren Buffett, if you remember this saying, where the great thing about investing is it's like baseball, but there's no strike count. You don't have to swing the bat until you're absolutely ready to swing the bat. My, my point is in all of this is the biggest, most prolific mistakes in starting new businesses happen because emotions start to get in the way of really analytical decision making. Now, we, we may not have the luxury of waiting forever to figure out what we're going to do, but at least put in the time and the effort before we pull the trigger on a business, before we execute on, on, on what, uh, what business we decide to go into. So going back to the difference between starting a new business and buying a franchise. Starting a new business has a much, much higher failure rate. In the U.S., it's about a 26% success rate in five years if you start your own business. Or PSB it puts out there. In franchising, that's flipped to a 92% success rate. Huge difference. And, and the difference comes down to you've got mentorship, you've got guidance, you've got someone hopefully who has been through this before, and they can coach you along the way to say, hey, do this, it worked. Don't do that, it didn't work. And, and give direction and support and advice to make sure we're, we're doing it correctly. Where when we start our own business, we don't have that. We're, we're, we're playing a little bit of uh, Yes, indeed. One of the things that I found really cool about starting a, starting a business, uh, according to the SBA, the average age of a new entrepreneur in the U.S. 58 years old. I kind of think like all entrepreneurs are young and crazy and don't have any gold years in the case. Uh, Colonel Sanders, I think, was like 63 when he started KFC, so no limit to this. I think it's a matter of finding a, a plan that works. Starting a business is absolutely hard work. The SBA quoted 57 hours per week uh, is the average work week for a, an entrepreneur, which to me sounds extremely low. Andrew, I think you work 57 hours on Tuesday. Uh, and, 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 and the reality is it's different when you own it. When it's your baby and it's your thing, it's fun. And, and I mean, I, I, I probably work you know, 80, 90, 100 hours a week, but it feels like, it feels like nothing because I, I have so much doing it. It's my baby, it's my thing, and, and if it grows and it builds and it's more successful, then, then I'm, I'm more successful. And I remember when I worked for a company for eight years before I started this, 50 hours would have felt like absolute torture, and it would have been like the most painful week. Uh, so there is hard work, but it's a much higher level of enjoyment. 90% of entrepreneurs said they enjoy what they do, they, they have fun doing it, and uh, it's a passion for them. Um, Know your limitations. Uh, a couple of things that we have to get comfortable with in starting a business. For one, 
when, when you're the boss, people are going to look to you for leadership, direction, advice, guidance, consultation. We've got to be comfortable with that role. It doesn't mean we have to be up in front of a room like, you know, getting 200 sales reps excited every day, but if we're in a restaurant, we've got a crew of people that are looking to us. If we're in the cleaning industry, the sanitation industry, we've got team members that are looking up to us for direction. Positive thinking and adaptability. This to me has been like the biggest sort of paradigm shift for me because I'm, I'm probably not wired like a true entrepreneur. I, I probably would have been a better fit as a franchise E than, a, than an entrepreneur. Um, I lost my job, so the next day I, I started my own business. It was kind of like out of, out of circumstances. But had things been different, I don't think I ever would have started my own business because I'm, I'm a rule follower. I, I always did what my parents told me to do. You know, I, I play within the guidelines type thing. Entrepreneurs tend to be a little bit more like break outside of the, 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 the lines in the box that you're supposed to stay in. The thing that I recognized in doing franchise work, the most successful people in business, period, the only common factor you can find is they're enormously positive about everything. And, and when it really clicked for me, a guy that I helped franchise, he was this Hungarian guy, off the boat, um, restoration company, English was like 50-50, super nice guy. He had lost all of his money six times. He started a, a car exporting business where he was shipping cars back to Hungary, and the first load got hijacked by Somalian pirates out of business. Then he became a day trader, lost all his money in like one day. It, it was like one failure after another. And then he started this restoration company. He sold it two years ago for $125 million. More, more money than, you know, almost any of us in the Any one of us, if we're not wired to think that way, would have quit and gone and gotten a job after the first colossal failure. There is such a value and a quality in constantly having a vision, constantly seeing the opportunity, constantly focusing on that, and not getting pulled into the day-to-day -day grind the minutia, the stuff that if you let it get to you, it will. And, and, and we need to make sure that we go into business having that, that frame of mind. I'm gonna be positive, I'm gonna look at the end result, and it doesn't matter if the ship is half sunk, I'm gonna have total faith in what I'm doing. Uh, tolerance for risk and uncertainty. Again, if we plan for this, I believe you can, you can really get a grasp on risk and then you can take calculated risks. You can understand the risk and you can make sure the plan's gonna, gonna justify whatever risk we're taking. Uh, discipline and motivation, and uh, learner and communicator. Um, when you start your own business, no one else is going to hold you accountable. It's up to you. And, and if you have that wiring, and if you found a business that you're passionate for, it doesn't take an alarm clock to wake up in the morning. It doesn't take any sort of uh, boss yelling at you to get motivated. It just happens. It comes from within and you'll find that you can put more energy, more passion, more time in, and it doesn't take any effort to do it. Uh, so going back to this uh, overview of uh, figuring out who we are. Decide what you want, 